Hey, hey, BTB fans, Ja here to show you an assembly tutorial on Spartan Scenics, the T-Junction corridor. So, uh, let's talk a little bit about Spartan Scenics. Spartan Scenics is part of Spartan Games. It's their terrain, uh, their HDF terrain line that they have uh, designed. It is for sci-fi based games and uh, it, is, it is super detailed and just wonderful to work with. Uh, so, I, I am going to show you the T-junction uh, because it's representative of the regular corridor and the cross junction. The only difference between the T-junction and the cross junction is obviously it doesn't go, it, the, the T is not crossed all the way, right? <laughs> so let me show you a little bit. So this is, this is um, a, the T-junction floor. The cross junction simply goes forward and the regular corridor has no, no uh, third exit. So that's the only differences, and, and so I'm going to be able to show you the pieces that go to this. Uh, there's two corner sections and one long wall section that goes with it. Uh, so each one of those has their own pieces that go to it, and I've laid them out right here uh, in an orderly fashion so you can see them. And uh, here you can see, yeah, if you can see that, you can see the, the floor section, uh, each, each one of these door arches. Uh, these ribs that go on the corners, this one, they're slightly different, but they're basically the same. This one goes in the corner, and this one goes to the wall. And, uh, and then, you know, smaller walls for the lower, lower walls, and then the, 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 the top walls, and uh, again, lower wall for the long section, then the roof, and the rails, and I have a rail right here to show you. And then these pieces, which come in every kit, which are the... Um, uh, I forget what Sean said they were called, but anyways, they're little flaps, they feel like puzzles, and that's what help uh, the, the kit be modular and fit with other pieces. So those connect to the other correct. corridor sections or the rooms and it, things? Correct, okay. correct, correct. And so that's how it goes. So now, uh, as you can tell, I've, I've pre, uh, I prepared this so that uh, we can, I can just show you the, what needs to be done. Um, and not have to bore you with doing it actually. So um, first thing you need to do is you need to know that they come in sheets. You punch the piece out and then some pieces like this one still have smaller pieces. Now I, I typically punch the pieces out with my thumb. Uh, you know sometimes I'll hit a corner and, and hit my thumb and you know whatever. Not a big deal. Uh, but for the smaller pieces my thumb is a little too big and there's even smaller sections like this one. Definitely, my thumb is too big. So what I use is I use this sculpting tool, which I found out at first. I was using my knife. Big mistake, because <laughs> uh, I was holding it kind of like this or whatever, and I could just like poke right through into. Going my... through a lot of band aids that way. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So you know, in order to save some money on band aids, I figured out I should use a rounded edge, and uh, and this sculpting tool is metal, so it you know it has some substance to it. So I just you know just poke poke these sections out and they come out like that super easy and then I throw I tip I throw these away I mean I suppose you can keep them for a rubble or whatever but we're not done yet uh, we need to file down uh, the, the kit actually says all you need is an exacto knife and I actually started that I used the exacto knife but I actually found because even with the exacto knife I was ending up filing it anyways uh, just to have it flat because uh, when you cut it off with an exacto, it kind of it's like paper. It like, peels off layers. So I found that I just I just use a, I, this is a, a pyramidal. Uh, it has three sides file, but you can use a flat file. It doesn't matter. I just prefer this one. And uh, and basically I just come right here with it, you know, with the piece still at full length, and I just file it down. Okay, and uh, and there we go. It's flat and. Uh, Typically just go in like this, I don't know if you can see that, shaking the table a little bit, not a big deal. But you want to get all the, uh, all those little tabs out of the way. One for aesthetic reasons and another reason because sometimes that surface will actually um, glue to something. Now one thing you do want to know is if you want to, if you're asthmatic or something like that, maybe you want to use a little mask because this powder is very fine when you, when you uh, file it off and you can breathe it in. It's not super hazardous, uh, you know, it's just basically sugar that we can't process, that's wood. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it kind of gets stuck in the lungs and it's annoying. 
it really really gets me dry. So uh, so now we're done. Now we know how to punch it out. So now we go to the gluing, and uh, I always start with with the roof just because it's super easy. All these railing pieces are very very easy, and, and you know, there's nothing. I don't know how to say it again, but it's, it's nothing complicated, very easy. I think I said it three times now. Uh, but this will show you something else that I found out as well. And that is that sometimes, and not in this case probably, in this case, we can just fit it in very, yeah, see it just fits in, fits in nice. Sometimes these tabs and the slots fit very tightly. We might experience it when I come to this part right here. Um, so this is what I do, and it's actually a very simple uh, solution, but what I do is I file just a little bit off the edge of, uh, of the tab. And I do it only on one side, on both ends. And what that does is that that will uh, ease just the initial entry into the slot. So you're just tapering that Right. Corner just a little bit. Right. I was actually in contact with the uh, designer of this kit and uh, and I compared notes and he called it softening the edges. So I, I don't know if that's a technical term, but there we go. You're softening the edges and uh, and, you know, and it helps you to in the initial port. And then you just put a little bit of force in there and it gets in there. Now this is a dry, dry run. Obviously it's not glued yet, but uh, now let's go to the glue. I just picked up this uh, Elmer's wood glue from my local store. It has plenty of it. I've barely used any and I've already assembled a kit and a half, which is a lot of stuff. Uh, normally I have a little toothpick to throw around, but uh, throw away, but this works as well. You know, I just need a little bit of uh, surface to kind of spread the glue around. And uh, it's okay if the glue runs over, you can always wipe it off. That's why I have my little piece of paper there. So now it's, it has the glue. I just put it in. Now I could have put a little bit of glue on this edge, but it's already so tight it doesn't matter. And see right there, I just take and wipe off this uh, excess glue and, and that's done. I don't have to, oh, and I make sure, I don't have to hold it. It's, it's just, it just holds itself. And that's one thing that the designer said uh, that of, of why, why he made the fit so tight is because he found it preferable for the pieces to just hold themselves together, because he he actually used super glue, and uh, I, uh, you know, he, he felt that the wood glue was too long of a weight to uh, to glue in. But as you can see, I mean, I didn't even hold the piece. I just put it in there and just left it, and uh, you know, and all these pieces are pretty strong. So and and if you do mess up, and I've messed up before as well, um, it, it's okay because. Remember that this is not this is not one solid piece of, of wood. So I'm going to show you. This is I glued this together before. Ugh, look at that. But it's okay. Look at that. It just peeled off one layer, just one little layer, not a problem. So now you know, kind of just clean it off a little bit. Uh, put some glue on again. So this piece, as you guys already saw, was indeed glued on. I ripped it off because I quote unquote made a mistake. I didn't really, but I'm just showing you guys if you do, not a problem. Bam. Okay. All right, so now we're back to uh, the, main, the main structure. I've already, like, as you can see, started it, um, but now I'm gonna finish it. And I have left one of each so you can see the process. Now. Uh, it's best to do a dry run when you ever have anything like this do a dry run first To just make sure the pieces fit how they fit get familiar with it That's always a good thing. I mean now you're watching this video if you haven't tried putting this together now You have a little bit of insight uh, But if you have in the past and you have not trouble in watching this video now you can relate maybe that uh, doing a dry one dry run is is very important uh, so So let's we're, we're gonna work on this corner piece first uh, and I'm going to show you the, the, and this is not, you, you can, you can do whatever order you want to, but this is what I found works best. And I'll, sh I'll show you why. I initially started by putting this piece in the corner and then building around it. But I, I <laughs> and I talked to the designer about this and he actually did confirm that, uh, you know, he had similar 
um, concerns as well, where it didn't it didn't actually fit flush. This one piece right here, for some reason, does not fit as as flush as you would hope. And you can see it right here uh, on this piece. You can see that there's actually you know a gap and and uh, and and it's a little uh, just a little bit angled. It's not much. It's just a little bit. But there you go. And uh, but the important thing is that you have both these pieces fit flush corner to corner and on the top which looks like I was doing this in a hurry and I didn't do it but I'll do it in the other one it's okay so what I found out then is that uh, it helps to put this little piece on first so that's what we're gonna do we're going to put this little piece on first which goes in the bottom and this is the dry run right there I'm just gonna see yeah this is where it's gonna fit and this is where it's gonna go approximately where it fits uh, corner to corner with the other one and it is flush over here and great so yeah, this, this is looking good already. So I put a little bit of glue. And uh, by the way, next time I think I'm going to grab a smaller bottle with a smaller opening because this always squirts out a ton of glue. Um, and then I just put a little bit on this corner. Yeah, just like that. And then kind of slide it across the surface there so it kind of catches some of that glue and make sure it's flush on the bottom press it tightly and see I'm this glue holds wood very well uh, I held it for like half a second and it's already doing it's not very solid I can you know knock it off fairly easily but um, but it doesn't take a lot of glue and it, and it does do a, a firm a firm bond when, when you let it set so there we go there's the first piece. I just, you know, it holds itself, so I just let it go. Um, I don't have to really, I, I've never really been a patient person. Uh, I can be if I want to, but, you know, I, I'm excited when I'm putting these things together, so I don't want to wait. Um, that's okay, because these, this glue, like I said, holds really well, and I just uh, keep working with it. And if it does happen to move a little bit, that's okay. I can, I can fix it if I want to. So here I am. You remember that this is a three-dimensional building, so there's going to be multiple angles and points of contact. So I put glue on every single one just to make sure I got my bases covered. And uh, there we go. So and what I'm okay. So what I'm doing right now is I'm putting this uh, arch piece on there. So you can see that the arch piece is going to contact all these all these surfaces that I put glue on. On, on the top of the on top portion of the floor and the whatever facing this is of the junction and I just push it in there put my finger in there keep it in there for a little while because this one this particular piece sometimes does uh, want to escape just there right there another thing that I do is I simply just put it on the on the table like that uh, we did. I did have to hold it in place for just for a little bit. Uh, like I said, the arches sometimes, for me in my experience, they tend to pop out sometimes. So now I'm going to put the uh, the inner corner rib. That's what I've been calling these pieces, the rib pieces. And this is the corner rib, just because it goes to a corner. Uh, actual name? Don't know. There we go. So put a little bit on both sides of the tab on the part. Oh, sorry. Yeah. This is this part is going to connect to that bottom uh, wall section. So this one, I actually put a lot of glue on it just because it contacts only the corners. So I kind of want this to just fill, fill up the gap. So I come right here and I push it. And, and this is another important part I'll review it on this piece is that you, wanna, you want to be consistent. So what I do is I come in with a tab and go in as far as forward as possible and then just roll it in as such and that makes sure that makes sure that the piece is as far forward as possible and uh, because that's the only way it's going to be contacting these two lower wall pieces and uh, you can see it's there's a little run over that's okay just wipe it off and uh, the glue does dry uh, clear so not a big deal and sorry it's not staying Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna let this dry for a little bit, and we're gonna move on to this rib piece right here. This is the top wall. It's gonna end up like that, 
And so, um, what I did before, and, and uh, you can't really, you can tell a little bit, is I, I filed away just the edge, just ever so little bit. And then this piece, um, I just put a little bit of glue on the surface that goes on the, on the, on the wall, put a little bit on the lower surface, and then put a little bit in this middle section that's going to contact either side. There we go. So here again, uh, I want to be consistent. So this slot, I can put this this piece lower, middle, or upper. And so what I've chosen to do, and I don't think that this is will affect you too much, uh, but you, you can choose to go either way. But I've chosen to go to the highest part possible. So I actually start, I, I put this piece as far up as possible and I, and I push it in and then I roll it inside like that. And then I just jiggle it in a little bit and there we go. There's a piece. I wipe it off if I need to. And if you can tell, all, I did all three the same way and it's important to be consistent because you know you might have a wall that's higher or lower. You might have a wall that's angled. I did that once. So that's why I say it's important because you don't want one of your corridors to have an angled wall. I do have one that is angled. But oh well, there we go. Okay, so the next part is putting this portion on. Uh, and how this is gonna go is, is actually, I, I found that it's best to put it at an angle and to start at this corner because it's kind of reinforced. So you come right here and, and you kinda, there we go. Jiggle it in. You're gonna have to just jimmy it a little bit. Now, something important to note is that this surface will be flat with this surface. So as, if you push it in too far, and then you try to straighten it out, uh, you can tell that, see, it, it doesn't want to be flat. So, but it's a very, very simple solution. What you got to do is you have to put pressure on the top portion and kind of just uh, push that way. And now, look at that. Flat surface right here, and it looks, and it's going to be straight. Now, let's take it off. That was our, our dry run, right? Now we're going to put some glue on there. Was that one where filing those inside channels would help? Um, yeah, this filing could help. I, okay, so this is something that the designer said, you know. He was like, yeah, you know, I never, he never filed anything down. Uh, and in this particular, this particular part, I found there doesn't really need much filing. But what he did say is, and as you can see right here, is that when he did his dry runs, it kind of filed it for him. It kind of tore off that, that top layer of paper. Uh, of wood, you know, so he can, so next time it's actually going to be easier. So a dry run will help you with that. Um, but, you know, it, it's your preference. So on this one, what I do is I put three little globs on these uh, sections that will contact the wall. And then I spread it to the lower portion on the sides of the tab, like such. And yeah, there we go, going, going, gone. And then I put a little bit on the sides where the wall is going to uh, uh, creep up. You know, this this lower wall, the tabs will actually surround this this part right there. The fit is so tight that uh, you probably don't need to put glue on everything, but I'm just a little OCD. There we go. So now we. Do this like like we did before, you know. Just put it in at an angle. Now, the reason why I don't put it in straight like that is uh, because it has a lot a lot more um, surface area that it runs friction through. You know, so let's say you know, let's do fingers. If you if you go like this, you're gonna have you know the whole finger length of friction. But if you come in at an angle, you only have two, and then you can you you can put more torque. Torque is is uh, easier to apply in this case than and straight up force. So, so your physics teacher was right. So you my, do <laughs> use physics and I do use every physics. day. Oh yeah, uh, my physics teacher ruined my life for about a year. Uh, I lived for physics. His class, he, he gave so much homework. It was it was ridiculous. My wife can attest to that. Anyway, so here we are, and uh, sorry if the, moving a lot for the camera but I just want to get this angle. Okay, 
Guys, here's a perfect example of a bonehead move. Does anyone know what I did wrong? Well, if this is your first time seeing Spartan Scenics, you don't know. But check this out. This is the t this is the top portion of the top wall. <laughs> so I uh, I put this backwards. So now I'm going to have to do exactly. I didn't have to show you over there, but I'll do it later. It's okay. Not a big deal. Uh, but basically, what I have to do is take these all out, and I am putting quite a bit of forces. You know, this this glue does do a good job. Oh man, I guess this is good educational though. But yeah, this is, and, and the reason being is that uh, you see these sections on the roof, they go right there, and that's why that's the top portion of the wall. So I'm going to do a. I'm not going to glue this on. I'm going to do a dry run then, and finish gluing it at home, just so that I don't waste time seeing me do it again. But, uh, there we go. I could probably even just leave it without glue and it'd still hold just fine. So check it out. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. So. <clears throat> the next portion I was going to show you was that I was going to put three groups of glue right here, right here, and right here, and then spread them out throughout this whole surface because this is going to be on the outside uh, of, the, of the floor right here and then on either side of the tab and on the bottom but I'm not going to do that because like I said this is not even glued yet um, but I'm going to fit it in already and as you can see it fits in really nicely and then I put a little bit of glue right in here as well so the glue's on there and on this surface. A little gap between the the door frame and the wall? Yeah so yeah, exactly. So you don't want the gap between the door frame and the wall. You know, it should be pretty flat, like this surface right here. Okay. All right. So now we're done with the long, long wall. Now we're just, the last step is we're gonna put these two pieces right here as such, then backwards. Um, and uh, what you're gonna notice here is that again, like I explained earlier, they don't, they don't fit flush with this. Here. But you know, so uh, but they do contact these corners right here. I'm gonna contact this corner, this corner, this corner, that corner, and then this flat surface right here on either side, and this one. So uh, I'm going when I put glue on this section, I'm gonna put a lot more than I usually do, just so I can fill in the gap. So right here, take one side, put some glue just like that, and then put a little bit right there and then take most of it and then kind of goop it up in there yeah just like that okay so then I take this portion and I line it up with this wall first and then and then I hold it down to the archway I hold it down to this piece because this piece is more yeah, it has solid contacts. So whenever you, you know, you assemble a model, if you have a spindly piece, you want to try to put it on as solid a, a, a contact as possible. You know, and this is as spindly as it ever has been for me with Spartan Scenics. Um, but in, in this case, I'd like, I like to use this, the archway as my main point of contact. And then when it dries, I kind of try to push this part to the rib in. So now I'm going to do the same with the other side. And the other thing, oh, the other thing is that uh, I do like the corners, these corners, to be uh, as exact as possible. You know, matching up as close as possible. And uh, I find that that uh, squeezing it to the arcway helps with that. So here is the other piece. Bam. Okay, and you can see a big old gap in there right now, but hopefully that's going to go away in just a second. When I hold these two pieces together, look at that. That's better. It's still not perfect, but it's better. 
Now, if anyone has a uh, better suggestion, please leave it in the liner notes because th this has been kind of a, a uh, non-perfect part for me. Uh, it's been I've struggled to get it to fit perfectly. So here I'm going to take some glue. Yeah, I'm just going to splatter it all in there because I want this. Yeah, see, it doesn't even come close to this section right here, but oh well. You'll see that actually that this is still pretty solid. All my other pieces are very solid. I've dropped them from a few feet and nothing. They hold their shape. So I just hold there for a second. Let that dry, and that's essentially it. Uh, you know, and then the, the, the roof goes on top, just like that. These pieces come in, and you can uh, lock it in with other Spartan Scenic sections. And there we go. Yep, there we go. There's your finished T junction. Just gonna hold this a little bit longer. And what I'll do in just a second is I'll put some glue on here too, kind of fill that gap, and on this side as well. But you guys don't have to see it. You know what glue is and. Uh, you just put a gloop in there and kind of smooth it out. There we go, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial. Uh, leave your comments if you have a if you've done this before and have better ways. Uh, I want to hear it too. So please leave your leave your comments.